Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining us today for this special webinar session. Um, this session is for our School of Life and Medical Science applicants um, who will be joining us this September. Um, now the session is recorded, it's nothing to worry about, it's just in case anybody's connection drops, we'll be able to share that with you after the session as well over the coming weeks. Um, we will be doing a Q&A towards the end of the session, so if you do have questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, just because the chat tends to move quite quickly and we don't want to miss them as well. Now, I'll just introduce myself. So I'm Kat um, and I work in the international office. Um, we'll also have my colleague Ellen, who will be joining us shortly, who's also in the international office and will be able to answer any questions you have. And then I've also got my colleague, um, Phil, on the line as well. Um, so, Phil, if you want to say a warm hello to everybody. Yes, good, good morning, everyone. Um, or oh, good afternoon or good evening. I, I guess that depends where you are in the world. Uh, yeah, I'm Dr. Phil Porter. I'm the Associate Dean International and Associate Dean Education. So uh, responsible for looking after all our students, both home and international. Thanks very much. Um, and we'll be hearing more from Phil shortly as well, but I'll just tell you how we're going to do the session today. Um, so we'll start off with a short introduction to your school of study so you can get an idea of what's waiting for you when you start in September. We'll then move on to a bit of an update on start of term preparation. So things you can do now to help you um, plan for that start of term in September. And after the slideshow, that's when we'll move on to Q&A as well. Um, so if you do have questions throughout, do feel free to post them. We'll be answering some via typed and we'll answer some live as well. So you can ask questions as we go. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll pass to you, Phil, um, so that you can go through your slide section. Thank you, thank you, Kat. Sorry, uh, could you just confirm you can see the first slide? Yes, we're all good. Yeah, lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, very warm welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, because I know some of you will be uh, in the early morning, some of you in the afternoon, some late at night. So we, we really do appreciate you coming to, to join us today and learn a bit more about uh, your school of study and other um, important issues that the Cat and Ellen will be covering with you later. Um, I'm Dr. Phil Porter, as I mentioned, I'm the Associate Dean International and Education, so ultimately responsible for uh, the student experience uh, across all our students, home and international. Uh, I'm also a, a geoscientist, that's my subject background. Uh, I'm a glaciologist, so somebody who studies snow and ice, and uh, geoscience is, is part of our very diverse, larger School of Life and Medical Sciences. And uh, I put this slide up. If you were in the room with me, we would uh, look at our school logo, which you can see on the right, and uh, have a game of uh, guess the subject area. Um, our logo represents one of our real strengths as a school, and that is our diverse and wide ranging uh, mix of subject areas that, that we teach and undertake research in. So you will be joining a very diverse school. Um, I'll just quickly go through the main subject areas in that logo. We've got uh, sports, uh, top left, so sports studies, sports therapy, sports science. At the top, we've got uh, nutrition, dietetics, agriculture. Uh, on the, the right uh, is my subject area, geography, environment uh, and planning. Uh, then we move around to optometry and then our clinical subjects, pharmacy, pharmaceutical science, uh, our postgraduate medicine provision, uh, etc. Uh, and then moving up uh, psychology and finally in the centre our biosciences provision. So we are a very diverse school. Uh, we enjoy great relations between our different subject areas, uh, a lot of collaboration both between students and staff in terms of, of research. And the picture on the left I've put in uh, is really just to illustrate the, the strong community we have uh, here at Hertfordshire in the School of Life and Medical Sciences. 
Uh, what you're looking at is a, a photograph taken from our Semester A Welcome Back event. This is something that I hope you'll come and join us to enjoy. It's a few weeks into term uh, and we welcome all our students uh, back onto campus, back to the university. And we usually have some free goodies for you to take away. Uh, branded with our, our LMS logo uh, and uh, in that picture you can see we're, we're giving away uh, t-shirts which always goes down very well with our students. Uh, but before I move on to, to talk about the school in more detail I, I just wanted to share with you uh, really the, the ethos or the mission uh, of the School of Life and Medical Sciences and, and our belief is very strongly that we work in partnership with our students. Uh, we view ourselves as a large family uh, because we academics uh, want the same goals as our students and that is uh, our students being happy and fulfilled and really enjoying their time at Hertfordshire but also graduating with the skills you need to succeed uh, and also uh, uh, heading off into uh, the workplace with an appropriate job or indeed on to further study and attaining your potential so we very much uh, value uh, and put great emphasis on our staff student partnership working together uh, towards a common goal and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that point uh, several times throughout the uh, presentation. Now um, we are a large school and that's one of our strengths because we have fantastic facilities as a result which I'll come on to uh, in a couple of slides time uh, but there are two main departments in our school uh, clinical, Pharmaceutical and Biological Sciences, uh, CPBS, uh, and secondly, Psychology, Sport and Geography, uh, abbreviated to PSG. We are a science school and we are absolutely committed to uh, our students graduating to become uh, the, the scientists, the practitioners and indeed the problem solvers of tomorrow. I don't think there's been a generation uh, ever uh, that has had so many challenges to face, be it food security, be it climate change, um, be it antibiotic resistance. And these are all the very challenges that we're training our students to, to face head on and to make a, a valuable contribution to the wider world. Uh, we strongly believe in research informed teaching, so research led teaching. Uh, we have a, a fantastically active research culture in the School of Life and Medical Sciences and a very real desire, and indeed this is put into action in many cases, uh, to engage our students with our research that staff undertake. We don't treat uh, research and teaching as separate entities. They're very much uh, melded together in terms of both research informing what you what we teach you so that your curriculum is bang up to date uh, but also engaging you with our research we have an enormous number of undergraduates and indeed taught postgraduate students uh, actively working with staff on their research projects so again that that staff student partnership coming through very very strongly uh, we also have a, a bronze award for the Athena Swan scheme which um, some of you may have heard of, some of you may not, but it really represents our commitment to equality. Uh, it's a scheme uh, where awards are, are given for institutions and departments that are seeking to address uh, the underrepresentation of women in our subject areas. So science, technology, engineering, maths and medicine. Now, you're going to hear me use the word state of the art a few times in this seminar. Um, but it, it, it's used justifiably, uh, in, in my opinion. We have a fantastic science building. You'll see various images of, our, of the science building on some of the videos I'm going to show you uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, genuinely world-class laboratories. The science building, I think, is three years old, uh, so very, very new, uh, and it is a, an amazing facility. Um, and one of the great things about being a large and diverse school is that all our students get access to all our facilities. So I'm a geographer, a geoscientist, uh, but I have full access to the bioscience, the pharmacy, uh, labs, be it computer suites or the wet laboratories. And we do make use of them, particularly for 
uh, some of the field work I do and the samples I bring back from field work. We're also pretty unique in the UK in having our own field station out of Bayfordbury. This is uh, near uh, Hartford. It's a 20 minute drive from campus. We have uh, lessons, practicals, field work sessions out of Bayfordbury, particularly for the environmental and geographical side of our provision. Uh, you don't need to worry about getting there. We always provide transport. But it is a wonderful facility uh, and it's also used as uh, a social uh, venue, uh, usually during the summer months. Students like to go out there just to relax. Uh, we have staff student events taking place at Bayfordbury. It's a very rural location. Uh, you will see some imagery of it in the video I'm uh, about to, to play to you. Uh, and here we go, state of the art again, but I, I mean it. It, it, it is a genuine comment. We've just opened our Institute of Sport, which is on our de Havilland campus. Uh, we have two campuses uh, in Hatfield. I'll talk more on that in a second, but uh, an amazing world-class facility, uh, brand new. Uh, and it's fair to say that our students, our first cohort of students are absolutely loving uh, that wonderful facility. So I'm, I'm interspersing these slides with a few videos just to give you a flavor of what you can expect at Hertfordshire. The first one uh, is in my subject area. So you're going to see me talking to this one. Uh, but this covers our geography and environment provision. Uh, and you'll see some uh, footage of our Bayfordbury field station. My name is Dr Phil Porter, I'm one of the lecturing staff here at the University of Hertfordshire and I'd like to spend a few moments telling you why I think uh, the University of Hertfordshire is a great place to come and study geography and environment. Firstly our location, we're just over 20 minutes from London by train so we've got access to the capital city for urban geography, transport studies, planning etc. Uh, but we're also surrounded by some beautiful countryside which is perfect for biogeography, rural geography, conservation and ecology. And we have our very own field station out at Bayfordbury, a 20 minute drive from campus, an amazing facility. We teach practical skills, field work, lab classes there. It's also a wonderful location for our students to relax and enjoy social activities too. Secondly, we have a really strong emphasis on practical applied skills acquisition. Those skills you need to succeed in the workplace, in the job market. We have a very wide portfolio of field trips and field work. All our compulsory field work, including residential overseas trips, is included in your fees. And we have a wide range of day trips, weekend trips, and longer residential trips on offer. We also strongly believe in our students engaging with staff research. I, for example, have taken students to locations such as the European Alps, uh, Iceland, and the High Arctic to support me with my research. So some wonderful opportunities there. And finally, we are a friendly group. We take great pride in the fact we know all our students by their first name. We have regular staff and student social activities, including weekly coffee mornings, but also, for example, weekend uh, hill walking trips away, where our, our staff and students come together uh, to enjoy social time. We very much believe in staff-student partnership at Hertfordshire and working together to help you succeed. So those are just some of the reasons why I think Hertfordshire is a fantastic place to come and study geography and environment. And I really hope you'll choose to come and join us and I can assure you of a very warm welcome. Okay, so that, that's just an overview of our geography and environment provision and uh, facilities. Uh, moving on to the, the more clinical subjects, uh, in the New Science Building we have the, the largest clinical simulation centre in the UK. Uh, you can see a, a photograph of that on the top right of this slide. Uh, we have mannequins uh, in this area, so it's, it's a, a simulated ward. Uh, there is a, a screen in that room behind which technicians and academic staff can, can sit and they can control the mannequins, they can even make them talk. Uh, and so it offers the students the closest um, simulation to a real world patient scenario and, and everything is, is completely realistic and laid out as you would expect to see it uh, in a ward 
in a hospital here in the in the UK. It, it's quite incredible. Uh, we also use actors, so uh, our students are dealing with real people um, and, and learning how to treat them, um, administer drugs, etc. So uh, a fantastic facility. Uh, and next door to that uh, clinical simulation uh, lab is our mock pharmacy, which you can see on the top left. Uh, it is laid out exactly as you would expect to see a real pharmacy on the high street in the UK. Uh, so thousands of, of packets of, of drugs, as you can see in that picture, uh, a controlled drugs cabinet, um, a dispensing area, a private consultation room, a shop desk with a till, etc. everything you would expect to find in a normal pharmacy. And so it gives our, our students uh, before they head out to engage in work experience in, in real pharmacies, uh, a fantastically realistic experience. Uh, and it's a facility we're, we're very, very proud of. Uh, nutrition and dietetics also have their own laboratories uh, for looking at analysis of food, nutrition, uh, and occasionally they have a, a social event in there because, of course, it is possible to cook. Uh, so we've had various student social events such as bake-offs, um that that's always good fun but a fantastically equipped uh, facility and then over at the institute of sport i'll show you a video of this in a moment um a, amazing set of facilities there uh, we have our sports injury clinic which is a real clinic where real patients attend to have sports injuries uh, dealt with and our students under the supervision of an academic uh, treat real patients uh, and I myself uh, have been treated there for, for various running related injuries. It's an amazing facility, uh, but also it gives our students 100% uh, realistic uh, experience of treating patients. Uh, we've got 3D motion analysis laboratory for, for looking at some movement uh, in, in sports such as running, gait, uh, golf swings, uh, etc. And our performance testing center, which you'll see uh, in a video shortly, uh, where we can measure respiration rates, we can simulate high altitude and the impacts that has uh, on performing uh, athletes. And then for psychology, uh, we've got our observation suites, um, uh, an amazing facility. Uh, this, this is a new facility, uh, control cameras, sound and video, a lot of use of, of visual reality uh, coming through on our programs as well. So for example, the use of 3D headsets, uh, an amazing resource for undertaking psychological experiments that involve uh, observation, remote observation of participants. Uh, and then finally, uh, my own area, ge geography, environments, uh, and indeed planning, we've got four dedicated laboratories, a GIS laboratory, geographical information systems. Uh, we have a physical geography laboratory, uh, which houses our rock collection and our map collection. Uh, we have a geoscience laboratory, uh, which is for our wet work, the, the sort of messy work that we do with sediments that we bring back from the Arctic and the Himalayas uh, and other areas. And of course, we have our Bay Fabry field station. And as you saw in that video, uh, an extensive range of field trips, both in the UK and Europe, uh, week, weekend trips, uh, day trips, half day trips, but also week long residential trips to locations such as the the Lake District in the UK, a beautiful area which, which you must visit uh, when you join us, uh, Europe and uh, even as far afield as the High Arctic. Uh, that's a trip I lead uh, with final year student, students in August. So I'm going to move on to uh, the pharmacy, pharmaceutical science and just show you a quick uh, video overview uh, of some of the facilities I've just mentioned. So you will see the simulation suites in this video and also the mock pharmacy, which you can see in the background of this uh, slide. Here at the University of Hertfordshire, we place a strong emphasis on patient-centered outcomes and professionalism within our pharmacy and pharmaceutical science programs. We work with a wide range of employers from the pharmaceutical industry and the NHS, whose input into the design and teaching means our programs meet the changing demands of the workplace. As a direct result of this, we have increased our hours spent in laboratories on the pharmaceutical science course, with particular focus on analytical chemistry and pharmaceutical formulation, and the biology and chemistry that supports these disciplines. We continually invest in industry standard equipment, including formulation development and sterile manufacturing suites, 
giving students the opportunity to be involved in the whole life cycle of a drug, from its discovery to patient use. Sorry everyone, I'm not sure what's happened there. Let me just try and... Here at the University of Hertfordshire, we place a strong emphasis on patient-centered outcomes and professionalism within our pharmacy and pharmaceutical science programs. We work with a wide range of employers from the pharmaceutical industry and the NHS, whose input into the design and teaching means our programs meet the changing demands of the workplace. As a direct result of this, we have increased our hours spent in laboratories on the pharmaceutical science course, with particular focus on analytical chemistry and pharmaceutical formulation, and the biology and chemistry that supports these disciplines. We continually invest in industry standard equipment, including formulation development and sterile manufacturing suites, giving students the opportunity to be involved in the whole life cycle of a drug, from its discovery to patient use. Our Master of Pharmacy program is designed with and for patients. We give our students the opportunity to experience placements from the very beginning of their studies through our community, hospital and industry partners. We make full use of a clinical simulation suite, allowing students to practice their skills in a safe environment, developing key patient-based skills. Pharmacy students also develop multidisciplinary skills through working with other healthcare students. We also offer a wide range of postgraduate programs for qualified pharmacists, overseas pharmacists, and pharmaceutical scientists. The department has a strong research ethos, and our research is rated as internationally excellent in areas such as toxicology, pharmaceutical formulation, development and analysis, patient safety, and drugs of misuse. Our courses are patient and employer focused by design, helping you become successful professionals. Okay, I'm not sure what's happened to my screen, so apologies everyone, but I seem to have gone to um, a smaller screen, but I hope that, that doesn't detract too much. Um, so uh, opportunities then, uh, I, I've touched on some of this already, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate um, points made in that video. We are uh, very much practical and research emphasis across the School of Life and Medical Sciences. Uh, and as a result of that, and the high quality research that feeds into our, our program development, our courses are uh, internationally recognized. Uh, we have fantastic links with our international partners. Uh, and indeed, we have fantastic links with industry uh, and educational institutions across the world. Uh, and this offers uh, wonderful opportunities for placements, for work experience. Uh, and many of our courses have uh, placements and, and work experience uh, built into them. Uh, so, for example, on the pharmacy degree, uh, there are a day work experience sessions in real pharmacies on the high street in the UK or in hospitals in the UK uh, to allow you to gain that, that valuable hands on real world experience, which is which is key uh, in terms of uh, developing your employability uh, and your, your desirability as, as a um, potential employee in the jobs market. So uh, the, the, the penultimate uh, degree subject area I'd like to just share a video with is our bioscience program. So we'll just have a quick look at this short video. Hey, let's talk bioscience at the University of Hertfordshire. And yeah, it's a pretty big subject, but don't worry, we've got it covered. So let's kick off with your options. Lots of different pathways. Biochemistry, biological sciences, biomedical science, molecular biology, and pharmacology. Plenty of choice. But we know that sometimes plenty of choice is a bit too much choice. So we've got some good news for you. We have a common first year for all our degree pathways. You'll be able to explore each subject, master the basics, and then change your preferred specialism for your second and third year based on that experience. That way you'll know what is right for you. And you're going to have access to top facilities to help you get that experience. Brand new, professional standard and fully equipped labs with everything that you could need. Once you've found your specialism and have mastered some of the skills required, 
you're going to want opportunities to put those skills into practice in the real world. And that's why we offer professional placements and work experience that you can get involved in while you're with us. Bioscience at Hertfordshire is going to take you places. You will even get an opportunity to spread your scientific wings and head overseas with our study abroad program. The theory and practical skills you will acquire from this course is going to help you get a job when you graduate. You'll finish your time here a well-rounded, experienced scientist. And all you have to do is come to the University of Hertfordshire. Told you we'd got it covered. So in that video, you'll have seen a few short uh, images of our, our new science building throughout. That's where our bioscience laboratories uh, are housed, as well as the simulation suites that I mentioned earlier. Now, another really important feature of our degrees in the School of Life Medical Sciences is that we seek to get as many of our degrees as possible accredited by professional bodies. Uh, and this is really important because it, it provides assurance of the quality of, of what we teach how we teach, uh, how we assess, uh, and also our, our facilities and opportunities for our students. Uh, now, the list is very, very long, but I've put a few examples of the uh, relevant uh, accreditation and governing bodies there. And I should add that this is not just a one-off. Uh, we don't get accreditation and then that's the end of it. These uh, accredita accreditation standards that our degrees need to meet are regularly reviewed. Uh, so we do need to uh, pay close attention to those standards and absolutely ensure that they are being maintained. Uh, and of course, that is a great assurance for you uh, in terms of the quality of the provision uh, in the School of Life and Medical Sciences. And we also take the well-being of our students very uh, seriously uh, in all areas. But uh, one important area is, is careers and employment, your future after uh, your graduation from the University of Hertfordshire and so our careers and employment team are a fantastic group uh, and they will support you not only during your studies with us uh, but also beyond. We don't just cast you out into the world uh, and leave you to your own devices, the careers and employment team are there uh, to support you even after graduation. I'd like to end uh, my presentation uh, or the last video in the presentation with just a short view of our Institute of Sport on the de Havilland campus. This is just a, a 10 to 15 minute walk from College Lane, uh, but there are regular shuttle buses, uh, so very easy to get to. Now in the video, you'll see reference made to the fact that the Institute is not yet open, but it is fully open now. Uh, so I'd just like you to have a quick look at some of the facilities there. The University of Hertfordshire's Institute of Sport is home to the University's Sport, Health and Exercise Department, which offers degrees in Sport and Exercise Science, Sports Business Management, Sports Coaching, Sports Development, Sports Studies and Sports Therapy. Officially opening in 2021, our new best-in-class facilities will provide you with hands-on experience with industry standard kit, ensuring you're prepared for your chosen career from day one. We'll have lots more to show when the Institute of Sport is fully open, but for now, here's a sneak peek at the facilities on offer. Our exercise physiology and research laboratories measure power, heart rate and oxygen consumption during exercise allowing us to gauge leg strength using state-of-the-art isokinetic dynamometry and body composition using bioimpedance scales. Our blood lab is equipped with laboratory centrifuges, blood analyzers and phlebotomy equipment used to sample and analyze blood for potential deficiencies or research purposes. The environment and control room can generate temperatures ranging from 10 to 40 degrees Celsius and simulate an altitude of up to 5,750 meters, replicating a range of challenging real-world environments. In our sports therapy teaching rooms, classes are delivered for the prevention, assessment, treatment and rehabilitation of sports injuries, covering topics such as anatomy, massage, peripheral and vertebral manual therapy and electrotherapeutic methods. Our consultancy room allows individuals or athletes of all abilities to understand and improve their fitness level, performance and health through enhanced testing techniques. A bod pod is used as the gold standard technique to assess body fat and muscle mass and compare the results with standard values. 
and this state-of-the-art biomechanics laboratory includes a grail system which features a virtual reality screen and treadmill which can be tilted during walking to investigate how the body copes with obstacles. We'll have much more to show later in the year and can't wait to welcome you to the newly completed Institute of Sport at the University of Hertfordshire soon. Great and uh, a wonderful facility and uh, having tried running at 5,700 meters, uh, uh, it, it is extraordinarily difficult but incredible that we're able to, to replicate that uh, down at almost sea level here in Hertfordshire. So the other thing I, I, I wanted to mention just to conclude on, uh, going back to my very first slide, we are a welcoming, friendly and, and very social school. Uh, we do have regular events for you throughout the year, the welcome back events I mentioned earlier, uh, but also in uh, April, May time, we have our Dean's Awards ceremony where the whole school comes together to celebrate the achievements of staff and students. And that's just one of many events that we, we put on to bring our community together. Uh, I will be setting up uh, for the first time a, an international student society for the forthcoming academic year. So that's something to, to look out for. Uh, and I really hope you'll, you'll join me in making that uh, a great success. So I'll end there. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I will be here for the Q&A, uh, but if anyone wants to contact me directly with any questions at all, my, my email address is on the screen now. And um, apologies for the, the technical issues with the screen, but I will hand back to, to Kat now to continue the rest of this morning's webinar. Excellent. Thank you so much, Phil. That was a brilliant session. And yeah, don't worry, we could see your screen fine. Um, so all good there. Right. If anybody Thank did you. have connection problems as well, we will be able to share the recording after. So nothing to worry about, but I'll just share my screen now. Excellent. So hopefully everybody can see that on my screen. Um, so what we'll do just before we go to the Q&A section, I'll just run through a little bit of an update on things that you can do now to help you prepare for the start of term. Um, I know it's about three months away, but that time um, you, you can be putting it to your advantage just to hit the ground running when you do join us at Hertfordshire. So um, there'll be various um, stages that you're at, all of our people who are in the audience. Um, some of you might have already received your CAS, which is excellent. Some of you might be clearing the last bits of your conditions or completing your sponsorship interview and or financial checks if those are required of you. Now, if you do have to complete an interview or your financial checks, the admissions team will email you to let you know and they'll also include a little bit of guidance as well about what you need to do and how you complete those extra tasks. Um, so just make sure you're keeping an eye on your emails and clearing your conditions. As I say, we, we can issue CAS now if you have completed everything and the admissions team are issuing CAS each day. So once you do reach that stage, you'll then go into the CAS queue and it'll be emailed to you as soon as it's been created for you. Um, now, just a few things that you can do while you're waiting. So um, if you have cleared all your conditions, there is a free online module that you can take part in. We do recommend it because it will just get you familiar with everything there is to know about heart. So when you do get here in September, everything will be a lot more familiar for you. So this free module is called Getting Ready to Study at Hearts. Um, you can access it using that web address that's on screen now and I'll share that with the chat later as well. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can go through in the module so there's a few videos from existing students about tips that they wish that they'd known before they came to the UK. Um, there's also an introduction to some of the support teams on campus so like the Dean of Students team, the Wellbeing team, the Careers team. There's also some video guides on how to use the online learning platforms like Canvas and StudyNet um, and how to view your timetable on those as well and different features that you can set up to personalise them for you. Um, so please do check out that module, take your time, work through it um, and make sure that you do it before you arrive just so you can hit the ground running. Very importantly, you should also make sure that you have booked your accommodation. You need to book your accommodation before you arrive in the UK to make sure that you've got somewhere to stay. Now, if you do want to live on campus, which we do recommend, especially if it's the first time you're coming to the university or the UK, 
you can apply for your room with a conditional offer and you'll be given a room offer once your deposit has cleared. When you get your room offer, you'll usually have about 10 days to pay your deposit for the room and then that room is secured for you. So um, do go through that process. If you get stuck at all, we do have a video guide step by step on how to apply for the on campus accommodation. There's lots of different room types to choose from. So whether you want um, a fully studio apartment with your own kitchenette and bathroom or whether you want to share with other students as well, there's something for everybody. If you do want to live off campus, there is a few extra things that you do need to be mindful of. So firstly, make sure that you have checked how much the commute is going to cost you. If you're getting the bus and the trains each day, that cost might add up and you might find it actually works out cheaper to stay on campus or at least live in the Hatfield area so that you can walk to your lectures so you're not relying on public transport. Um, make sure that you check the bus and the train timetables if you're going to be relying on public transport. You need to make sure that you'll be able to get there for any potential early morning or later evening lectures that you might have as well. Now, another important thing is make sure that you choose PAL accredited landlords if you are staying off campus. So what PAL is, it's a scheme that the university has set up with the local council to make sure that any properties displayed on the PAL website, they're in a good state of repair. Um, all the goods inside, so like your cooker, um, your fridge freezer, they're all good working condition and the images that you see online match the property as well. And also your deposit is held securely. So do make sure that you choose PAL accredited landlords for staying off campus just to keep everything secure and know that you're getting um, a really good property there. Um, and then just another reminder, make sure you keep an eye out for those emails from the admissions team in case you've got any final conditions to clear as well. If you're not sure, please do email us at international at hearts.ac.uk and we'll be able to check that for you as well. Just make sure you include your ID in the email so we can find you. Now, we're just going to do a quick poll. Um, you, you can join in if you want. It's just to see who might have been to the UK before. We know that for some of you, this might be the first time you've ever owned a passport before as well. So traveling through the airport might be very new. So I'm just going to launch a poll now that you will see on your screen. Feel free to take part. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just so you can see what your fellow potential future classmates might have done, the experiences they might have had. So I can see a lot of people are answering now which is excellent so I'll just leave that open for a few more uh, minutes to give everybody a chance to take part if you want to okay so just over half of you have answered now so I am going to close the polling um, in a few moments so if you are just hovering over the button do submit your answer now excellent so I'll close the polling now we've got lots of people taking part which is excellent so I'll share these results on screen so we can see that most of you who are in the audience today haven't been to the UK before some of you have which is really nice to hear but for those of you who haven't please don't worry we're going to be giving you a lot of information um, about how to navigate the airports how to get from the airport to the campus um, so we'll be doing similar sessions like this to help you so that you feel comfortable and confident before you travel OK, so back to the slideshow. So um, a few things that we will be doing to help you um, is we will be producing our pre arrival guide. Now, this is going to be on our website. Once it's ready and updated for the September 2022 intake, we will email that around to everybody just so you can take the time, read through that. Now, there is a lot of information on there. You've got things from um, cuisine you might come across when you're in the UK, cities that you might want to visit, but also important things as well, um, like packing checklists, um, what to do if you don't get your visa, um, and also some other important things as well. So do take your time, read through that, but once it's ready, we'll send it round to you. To accompany that, we'll also be doing our pre-departure webinars. So there'll be a similar format to this today, um, but they'll all be around um, pre-departure. So as I mentioned, how to get from the airport to the campus. Um, if you are using public transport, how you can do that. Um, packing things as well, and just a few other tips and tricks to help you. So 
we'll be sending out the invites to those shortly as well for you but they usually take part um, towards the end of July throughout August and the start of September as well so you'll be able to find a slot that suits you. Um, travel requirements so very good to know you no longer need to take COVID tests fill in a passenger locator form or quarantine on arrival to the UK so our January intake who we welcomed they did have to do these extra measures but with the current situation in the UK as it is at the minute you don't have to do these so that's excellent um, once you arrive you'll just be able to get straight stuck into any freshers activities that are happening now you do need to check your own country's travel requirements because they might have um, rules in place where you might need to take a COVID test before you get to the airport or you might have to wear your mask throughout the airport or on the plane. So do check your own country's requirement and that also applies for any transit countries that you might be going through as well. If you've got a flight where you've got a changeover in a different country, check that country's travel rules as well. Now, when you do get here, there's lots of exciting things that are going to be happening for you. So we have our orientation week, which is one week before the start of term. And before that, at the weekend, which will usually be around the 17th of September, there will be free airport collection as well from Heathrow. We'll be releasing details about that soon. So if you are traveling to Heathrow on that weekend, you'll be able to take advantage of that and book onto that service as well. Um, throughout the orientation week, which is the week before the start of term, there's lots of different activities to get involved in. Um, there'll be guided tours on how to get to the local supermarket, how to use the self-service checkout tills, um, game nights, movie nights, food festivals as well. So this is all arranged by our Dean of Students team um, and they'll be releasing a calendar of events soon and they work with different teams like the SU just to bring you those special events. And then after the orientation week, that's when the freshers week starts as well. So that'll be when most of our UK students arrive. And again, lots of different things to get involved in on that week, lots of activities. Um, you'll be able to meet some of the clubs and societies that are at heart. You'll be able to join them if you want to. There's hundreds of clubs and societies. You'll be able to meet the students union reps as well. So if you do have a particular interest um, and a club doesn't already exist for that, you can speak to your students union rep and they'll help you set up a society as well. Um, if you're into sports, there's 28 sports clubs at the university. You might get the chance to represent the uni against other universities in the UK as well. Um, and there is something for all abilities. So even if you're an absolute beginner, please do get involved. Um, you, you can still go, you can try out different sports. Um, there's also a team called Active Students who do offer uh, free sport trial sessions as well, so you can give things a go. And then there's the chaplaincy and religious groups as well. Now, I know that the COVID situation is different in different countries around the world. Some of you might still be a little bit anxious about what things look like. So we just wanted to reassure everyone um, that the university has worked very hard on creating a COVID secure campus, just so all students and staff can feel safe and carry on with their education. Um, so what does a COVID secure campus look like? So the teams have increased cleaning around the campus, so that includes in the communal spaces as well. Um, there's also food delivery options, so from the on-campus shop, um, if you download the app when you get here, if you do need to get a food delivery and you're living on campus, you'll be able to get that through the app as well. If you do have to isolate at any point during your time at Hearts, there's also additional support. So from the wellbeing team, the Dean of Students team, um, but that's another reason why we say live on campus or in the Hatfield area, just because then if you need any assistance, it's easier for them to get to you. And if you haven't been able to get the vaccine yet in your own country, don't worry, you can still travel to the UK without it. But once you're registered at the university, you'll be able to enrol with a GP and then you'll be able to get the vaccine for free in the UK as well. Some of you might have had um, your first vaccine and you're waiting for your second or your booster. So when you do enrol with a GP in the UK, just tell them where you're up to, which vaccine you've had and they'll be able to book in for you if you need your booster at any point as well. 
Now, what we'll do now is time for the Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, and we'll be able to ask them for you. I know that some have come through already, which is excellent. So now is the time. Um, please do feel free to ask us anything you like. Okay, so can you hear me okay, Kat? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Ellen. Um, so I'll be going through the questions um, and then I'll just direct them. So we've got a couple at the moment. Um, so Phil, this one will probably be for you. Um, may I know which campuses among the two includes the Biological Science Building? Yeah, thanks, uh, Ellen. Uh, biological Science uh, Labs and Staff Offices are all on the College Lane campus. So there, there would be no need for you to uh, go to DHAV. Uh, De Havilland campus, uh, but as I said, I strongly encourage you to head over there. There is a the fantastic Hertfordshire Sports Village, uh, and even if you're not studying sports, it's well worth looking around the Institute of Sport uh, and just seeing what goes on in there. It is absolutely fascinating. So, but yes, all, all the biological science um, uh, suite of programmes are housed on College Lane, as are the bioscience staff. So it's it's only sports who are on the De Havilland campus. Great, thank you. Um, next question, uh, I'm not sure if it's already been mentioned, but may I know the start date of the MSc health simulation and when am I supposed to arrive in the UK? Yes, uh, uh, it does vary across our, our programmes. So that is a question I'll need to get back to you with. Uh, I believe our clinical programmes do start slightly earlier, uh, the uh, postgraduate medicine programmes. Uh, but if you'd like to drop me an email, uh, p.r.porter at hearts.ac.uk, uh, as on my slide, or contact the international team directly, then I'll, I'll happily follow that up for you uh, and give you the exact answer and also put you in touch with the, the programme leader for, for health simulation. We do actually have, Phil, at the, at the moment, we're just... Um... We, Kat and I will be uploading, um, updating the pre-arrival information on the website. So all of the arrival dates will be there as well. Lovely. We have our standard arrival um, date, but as you say, some programmes do have earlier start dates. So that's the best place to check. Um, currently for the MSC Health and Medical Simulation, we have the 19th as the start date. Um, but once before we publish them all, we were going to, to triple check them. Um, but the arrivals weekend for international students is the weekend before that, so the 17th and the 18th. Um, so we would strongly encourage students to arrive um, by that weekend um, if the, the course start date is a standard one. Um, obviously, if it is before, then they would need to arrive uh, in, in accordance for that. But um, all information, once it's completely confirmed, will be put on the website and students will be emailed with all of this information as well. So um, the pre-arrival pages are a really good um, resource for information for international students who are coming in. Um, okay, there's another one, Phil, probably for you. Um, can you briefly talk about personal tutoring, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, personal tutoring is embedded across the whole school. So we, we take that uh, very seriously. Um, it's about looking after your, your welfare, your well-being generally, but also uh, ensuring that you're on track with your academic studies and that you've also got somebody on hand to come to if you've got any issues that you need to discuss with, with the team. Um, the only place where we don't have formal personal tutors is on a very small number of our master's programmes, and the reason for that is that they are relatively small cohorts, and so the programme leader... Uh, and deputy programme leaders um, and other key members of staff are available on site, a full open door policy, uh, which is something we're very proud of in, in our school. So you will be taken care of, I can assure you, both, both academically and, and in a pastoral sense. So yes, personal tutoring is well embedded across, across the school. Uh, as I say, apart from uh, a couple of our, our postgraduate programmes, but rest assured you will be very well looked after. Perfect, thank you. Um, another one for you, Phil, sorry, they're coming in thinking fast now, which is great. Okay. Um, how many days a week uh, is on campus for the health yeah. simulation um, and which campus will be taught on? So you've covered that bit, but just a bit about teaching days if possible, please. Yes, okay, yeah, it, it will vary week by week. And uh, I can't speak specifically for uh, that particular program, but uh, it's certainly something I could check with you, uh, with the program leader, uh, and I can get back to you on that. But it, it will vary from week to week and between programs. Um, 
the the campus is of course uh, College Lane, as I mentioned earlier. So it's only sports that are over at the uh, De Havilland campus. Perfect. Um, um, another one which I'm not sure that we'd um, be able to to answer now. I might have to get back to them. But um, hello, I saw that there were three types of DBS checks online: basic, standard, and enhanced. Which DBS checks should I do? Kat, do you have any idea of that or? Um, I believe that you'll be emailed confirming which one you should do. Um, and I think that the DBS checks, they actually take, uh, they actually happen once you're in the UK, but you're asked to make sure that you arrive with your details. So I know that depending on what course you're doing, if this is relevant to you, um, you'll be asked for certain information. So if you need any background information, it's a lot easier for you to get that while you're in your own country bring the details to the UK and then when you complete the checks um, you've got all the paperwork that you need as well but do keep an eye on your emails because that will explain to you exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it in any forms that you need to fill in. Perfect thank you. Um, so another one that, that I can take good afternoon so I wanted to ask I'm not able to log in for booking my accommodation um, whenever I do log in it's, it shows there's no record found. Um, sorry you're having issues there if you email international at hearts.ac.uk uh, with your student ID we can have a look um, into that for you sometimes it's just a, a technical issue and um, so I'm sure there's absolutely you know we can fix it quite quickly but send the information in and we'll take that to the accommodation team for you um, there's another one about um, campus Phil but I think you've obviously mentioned this a so campus for MSc water and environmental management I presume that's the same and that's college lane uh, yes, yes, partly, um, but we would also uh, do some teaching at Bayfordbury for that programme, uh, making use of the facilities out there, uh, and there would also be uh, field work on that programme, which obviously would not take place on campus with me out doing uh, exercises with you in other locations, um, but yes, uh, the, the classroom teaching is on College Learning. Perfect. Um, Kat, one for you, if you may. Um, which campus should we reach on the very first day? Um, so when you first arrive in the UK, go to your accommodation. So if you are staying in on-campus accommodation, then depending on where you've booked, if you've booked to stay on de Havilland, then go to the de Havilland accommodation office. If you're staying on College Lane, go to the College Lane one, which will be the Oval. Um, if you're living off campus, make sure you've made arrangements with your landlord or your accommodation provider so you know when and where to pick up your keys. Um, after you've checked into your accommodation, when you want to start exploring, it's completely up to you. So there'll be the orientation week timetable will be released soon. So you'll be able to see what activities are taking place, which campuses are taking place on. If you miss the orientation week and you're arriving for freshers, same again, check that timetable. But also during freshers week, your courses will have likely started. So when you log into Canvas and StudyNet, check what your academic timetable is as well. That'll tell you the room numbers you need to be at. And you can check if you download the Hearts mobile app, there's a Wayfinder facility where you can find what campus those rooms are on and how to find those rooms once you're inside the buildings as well. Great, thank you. Um, so the next question is about um, arriving in the UK, what's the best time um, if they are settling in accommodation off campus and for opening a bank account. So when you receive your CAS letter, that will give you a date that you're allowed to enter the UK um, on. So you just need to make a note of that. Um, with regards to off campus accommodation, um, I think Kat mentioned, if you are looking to stay off campus, um, do make sure that you go for a PAL, a PAL accredited landlord. Um, that will just ensure that everything um, is above board. Um, and with opening the bank account, um, that will be, you would need to have your, um, your student letter uh, for that as well. So there's lots of um, information, things to do at the start of term, but you will have um, communications and emails and everything that you need to know where to go will be sent to you. Um, so just make a note uh, sort of the date in your CAS of when you're allowed to enter the UK. Um, next one, um, a student who's uh, presently in Nigeria and the main um, applicants are having booking an appointment with the embassy here. So yes, we are aware obviously um, in Nigeria, but also globally there are issues with um, visa appointments. This is something that we are aware of um, and we are sort of working to strategies around this. Um, so it, we are still very early in the cycle, which is, which is great. Um, but going forward, 
if you know if anybody's having problems with securing a visa appointment please do get in touch with either your um, in-country representative or by email at international and then we can deal with those um situations on on an individual basis but we are aware that there are delays um so fingers crossed that you can get your your visa on time um phil one for you um how soon will i get a project supervisor yeah, thanks, uh, Ellen. Um, it will vary between um, programs. So, for example, if you're studying MSc Environmental Management, uh, you will be allocated a project supervisor within uh, a couple of months of joining us. Uh, and that's so we're getting you as prepared as possible. Uh, on our undergraduate programs, you would normally be allocated a project supervisor at the end of your second year or beginning of your final year. Uh, it does vary between programs. Um, but, um, but yes, uh, we would do all that we can to allocate you the best possible supervisor. Uh, and we would start that process on any program with sufficient time uh, for you to build that student supervisory relationship and to, to be well prepared uh, to crack on with your research uh, in the best possible position. Um, I can see also there's a couple of subsidiary uh, questions there about how long the research takes uh, again, it will depend on the individual degree you're studying. Uh, so for MSc, Environmental Management, it, it, it is several months for your research project, um, as it is for an undergraduate final year research project. But it does vary depending on which programme you're, you're studying on. Right, thank you. Um, another one, um, Kat, maybe for you, how frequent are job fairs at Hearts? Um, so they, they do take place quite often. Do check the activity schedule. Um, so I know that usually in the first week, there'll be lots of um, chances for you to meet the careers team. And then the careers team, they do hold job fairs throughout the academic year. Um, they're at various points in the cycle and it'll give you a chance to meet a lot of employers, speak to different people and start networking as well. So do check out the timetable for that because I don't have the set dates yet for this intake. Um, I think that's about all we've got time for for this session. Um, but thank you very much to everybody who, who has attended. Um, just as a reminder, um, if you do still have questions, I'll try and answer as many as I can uh, typed while we'll just play a last video to let you go as well. But we will be holding some social media Q&As as well. Um, these are a few examples of ones that have, have already taken place. But if you do want to watch those back, just go onto the international Instagram channel and you can watch those in the video section as well. And when we've got the next one uh, advertised, you'll see that on our feed as well. Um, if you do want to hear from any international alumni, every now and then we also get some alumni on our channel as well. So you can go back and watch what they had to say um, about their experience at Hertfordshire, um, studying in the UK and what they're up to now as well. Um, so just a reminder, if we haven't been able to answer your question, because I know a lot came through at the end and I'm so sorry if we haven't got to your question, please do email us at international at hearts.ac.uk. Just put in the email that you attended the webinar and what your question was. Make sure you include your student ID and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so I'm going to play the final video now, but thank you so much, Phil and Ellen, for giving up your time and joining us today. If you do have um, other meetings booked at 10, please feel free to leave while I play the last outro video. Um, but we can't wait to welcome everybody here in September. Thanks, Kat. Thank you.